Welcome to Tip Tuesday. Today we're going to have a little bit of a look at how to pass data back and forth between sub-reports in a report. So I'm going to go ahead and turn my face off here uh, so we can see the entire thing. And what we have here is a report that simply has a list of our equipment, all of the events, and the test points. And the goal here is going to be, at the end, I want a list of the total event count and the total test point count. And so looking at my setup, you'll notice I've used a sub-report for displaying that summary data. And the reason I'm doing that is because when you get into some more complicated reports, you can get very large areas of summary statistics, you know, especially if you've got weird, complicated stuff. And in a summary, that could get split between pages, but with the sub-report, I've got the option to say keep together, so it'll just shove down onto the next page if it would normally get split. So that's why we're using a sub-report. I'm just saying no data pipeline, so it'll just display whatever. The problem becomes, how do I get my counts into the sub-report? And so that, we're going to look at our calc tab. Now, normally we pay a lot of attention to the events view because that's where I can add logic onto various objects in this report, and we're going to be doing that. But what I want to look at right here is the module view. And in the module view, you've got the ability to create custom programs and also declarations. So for example, here you can see I've created a variable called test, defined it as a string. And the key thing here is that variable is visible in all my sub-reports. So what this is going to let me do is this allows me to start collecting information in my sub-reports pass it back up to the main report, and then access it again from sub-reports. Now, if I come in here and declare variable in sub-report 1, you'll notice that's not available in sub-report 2. That is only available in sub-report 1. So we're going to go ahead and delete that. Then we're going to go to main, and I'm going to create the variable I actually want to use, which is going to be uh, tp count and i event count, and these are going to be integers. Something else to be aware of as you're doing this is in the language section, we have a list of all of our data types. So, for example, Boolean, doubles, integers, uh, car and string, uh, date, time, and others. Now, that's not the complete list. We've also got things like uh, t-string lists and various other things you can create. But you may want to be aware of that. Uh, we've also got enumerated types, so you can clearly see you know we've got true and false as our Boolean values. So these are a list of constant values that you can use in your programs. And then we've got some more like, you know, CL, 3D Dark Shadow, uh, various device types, uh, nil and null. So this is just an additional list of things that you can use as you're coding. So. Going back over here, we now have TP count and event count. And what I can do, switching over to the events, is in my summary here. I, I'm going to use summary after print. So what I can do now is I can say I event count assigned i event count plus dbcalc one dot value and right click and compile we can see that compiles with no errors 
and we can do the same thing here. So ITP count signed ITP count plus dbcalc2 dot value. Again, compiles no problem. And then on the subreport three, so 17, if we go back to our design, we can see 17 is the event count, 18 is the test point count. So I can say, on my before print, we can say label 17.caption is assigned int to string I event count and label 18.caption is assigned int to string ITP count. Quick test compile and we can see we now get a what looks to be a fairly reasonable, you know, we've got 19 pages of data that looks fairly reasonable. Now, things you want to be careful of is these are persi those values I've generated are persistent. So, for example, if I change my report to two pass, you'll see that my event count and test point count here have doubled. So that's a problem. So on the report, what I can do is I can say on start first pass, and I can also do that on my second pass. So now I preview go to the last page, we fix those counts to make those correct. So these are some examples of things that you can do um, in order to pass the data back and forth. And you know, for a simple report like this, you really wouldn't need to do that. You could have taken these things and, you know, put those in the summary here. You can actually access the objects in the summary of the main report from your sub-reports. But especially as the reports get more complicated, for example, if you've got hundreds of pieces of summary data, you're more likely to want to have a sub-report to just organize all of that. And then you need the variables to pass things back and forth. So this is how you can use those variables in order to pass data around within your report.